Welcome to session three of Remain Conference, a sisterhood experience we've been waiting all year for. In today's session, you will be hearing from the leader of our sisterhood team. So please put your hands together for Amanda with Sean. loved you, so you must love one another, and by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. So when we're not in unity, it's like, what are we doing? 
that's our testimony when we can sit here together and people of all, you know, races and backgrounds, like we come together, we marry unity, and that shows like, what's it those people? Well, we serve the living God. And I believe that's why the enemy tries to scatter us through division, through offense, through bitterness, through anger, through just all the things, because he doesn't want us to be together. So then he puts us against one another. And number two is the enemy knows when we remain hopeful, we're anchored. He can't shake us from the purposes and the promises and even the presence of God. Hebrews 6, 16 through 20 says, Now when people take an oath, they call on someone greater than themselves to hold them to it. And without any question, that oath is binding. God also bound himself with an oath so that those who receive the promise could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. I'm going to pause there. He would never change his mind. He doesn't think, oh, well, you know, maybe, maybe if they're good enough or, no, we can be hopeful that he never changes his mind in what he says. So God has given us both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge, we who choose to remain in him, can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us, this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. He's our hope. And he wants, the enemy wants to scatter us through doubt or discouragement, disappointment, shame, disgrace, because again, what we said, he's trying to scatter us from the presence of God. He doesn't want us to stand firm and realize that he really is our firm foundation. And I really believe that Nehemiah, like that story when I was reading it and he was hearing from his brother, he was like, yeah, they're just, you know, they're sitting there just in, 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 just, um, in disgrace and shame and they're just moping. And he was, I could feel like, absolutely not. We just came back, we built the temple, we rebuilt the altar of God. It's time for us to stay on mission for the Lord because he was, he's like, we're not going to be down, downcast. We're God's people. We're God's people. And as for the Lord, he's like, because the enemy wants to shake our faith. He wants to shake our confidence in God and shake our hope. And Nehemiah was like, no, we're not doing this. And that's to me, he was like, no, we, we have something to build for the Lord. Because when we lose hope, when we are downcast, we get stagnant. When we lose hope, we get stagnant. And so to him, you remain hopeful, you keep going. They had work to do. And I love that with Nehemiah, his heart was more than just those walls. Yeah, it was for the Lord, but he was like, we're rebuilding a people back to God. because the enemy knows when we're on mission for the Lord, there's nothing in hell that can stop us. Luke 21, 17 through 18 says, and everyone will hate you because you're my followers, but not a hair on your head will perish. By standing firm, by remaining, you will win your souls. And the Lord just showed me, he was like, I was like, Lord, okay, well, what is our mission today? Like, what is the thing? Because obviously they were rebuilding that wall and I'm like, what is it for us today? And he was just like, do what Nehemiah did. Be the vessel that the Lord uses to gather his people and advance his kingdom here on earth. The Great Commission. And to help build the church by building up believers. That's what we're all called to do. Not just the pastors, not just the worship leaders. Like each one of us who knows Christ, we're called to do the Great Commission. Um, which we, we, we know that well here. <laughs> That's our... Um, our mission statement, ironically, but mission, mission. Anyways, um, but I love this quote from Present Day Truth by Dick Iverson. It says, God is not interested in just getting people saved. If all we do is evangelize the world, we have not fulfilled the Great Commission. God wants us to teach and instruct in doctrine all the nations. Why? Because he wants a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. 
He wants to come to the unity of faith. We cannot fulfill the command with our mission, our mission, attract or avoid a message. For this commission to be fulfilled, there must be a planting of a local church, which have taken seriously the command of Christ. There must be a place where the new plants can be nourished and watered. Newborn babies in Christ must have a home in which they can be fed and established in the faith. And I just feel the Lord is in a place where he's rebuilding this passion. And for me, this is my testimony. Um, this church helped rebuild me in the Lord. Um, I mean, he did the inner work. Like he, you know, the temple, he fire, put fire back in my heart. He restored my soul. But I was like these little scattered jingle blocks. I came here a mess, which I'm not going to go into that. But for me, it was like every time I came into this church and sat in the presence of God, he was like, all right, I'm going to build this wall. Because he's trying to protect the inside of my heart. And so getting in and cruise while I was at Thrive, but get around people who love the Lord and taught me, getting mentors, learning the word, being discipled, having people pray for me, crying in prayer, <laughs> crying in worship, um, people believing in me, reaching out to me, inviting me, being my friends, you know, not looking at me like this girl just got drugged in from the streets. I want to, <laughs> you know, they just, I kept feeling love and, and just people saw the Lord in me, and you know, there's still more to go. I still got building to do. Um, but every time that I got asked to build my test, share my testimony, um, just serve, greet somebody, it was like the Lord was slowly rebuilding and making a wall and protecting what he did in my heart. And that happened in the local church. Of course, in his presence and worship and prayer, but he uses the church, uses us to do that because here's where we get to put our hands on people. Each one of you can have somebody you put your hands on, love on, help disciple, help grow, and that's our mission because when we don't do that, then we see the church getting smaller and smaller because this is what the Lord has called us to do until he returns to build his church with him. And the enemy hates that, which is why I believe that he tries to scatter us from the church, from other believers, just from his presence. He doesn't want us here. But everything we just talked about, it just requires a commitment from us to be committed to the Lord and his word. And because when we look at the story of Nehemiah, I just think of like, they were God's chosen people. Like, what happened? And he brought me to Deuteronomy 6 and just had me read it. And it says, listen, O Israel, the Lord is your God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. You must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home and when you're on the road, when you're going to bed, when you get up. Tie them to your hand, hands. Wear them on your forehead as reminders. Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And when I look at this story, I'm like, did y'all not get it? What happened? And he just told me very like, clear, like, they stopped being committed to me and committed to my house, committed to what I was trying to do. And he was like, he just showed them, they, they stopped loving me with their whole heart, their whole soul, their whole strength. And it was just so convicting because he doesn't want lukewarm followers. He wants us to choose, remain or don't. Which is sometimes hard. You're like, that's damn, it's rough. But he's just like, no, he went all the way for us. So it's up to us to choose, am I going to remain or not? Am I going to do the things I need to do to stand firm and have this, like, wall protecting what he's done in my heart? Or am I just going to leave myself exposed and be scattered? And he died for us so that we could remain in his presence forever. That's what he intended since creation. 
That's why the work of remaining in unity, remaining on mission, remaining committed, just being faithful to him is so worth it. Choosing to remain in him is worth it. And it's the hope that rings in 1 Corinthians 15. And I just feel like he wanted me to do this, so if it's weird, I'm sorry. I want you guys to all close your eyes. <laughs> and I'm just going to read this scripture, and I just felt like he wants just to get this picture of the gift he really does have for us. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will be transformed. It will happen in a moment in the blink of an eye when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to life forever. And we who are living will also be transformed, for our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die. This scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is, the, sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. But thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong, immovable, always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Y'all can open your eyes. He's the gift. He's the reward for remaining. And I feel like sometimes it's like, oh, that's nice, that's cute. Like, no, that's real. He's the gift. He's a reward, and we can choose to remain with him or be scattered. And like I said earlier, his word is, is binding. It's true. He doesn't lie. And so when I read that, I was like, Lord, what a gift that you want to remain with us forever. And the enemy, he's, again, he's, he knows this, and that's why he scatters us. And he, like, gave me this picture, and it was, you know, the scripture. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And I was, like, thinking of a lion and thinking of, you know, just in their natural habitat. When a lion comes in and there's other animals, they, like, flee and are scared. And I'm like, Lord, we don't have to be scared. We don't have to, when we see the enemy coming, be scattered. Or when life gets hard, we scatter. Or we lose hope. Or... You know, we start questioning with doubt. Like, he's always trying to throw things in our face, in our midst, to get us to just, just for a second, question God. Or just for a second, just make us doubt. And I'm like, Lord, help us to remain steadfast in who you are no matter what. At the end of the day, we look at the story of Nehemiah. All he ever wanted was to remain with us. And those walls were only important because of what was behind them, God and his people. And I didn't think it a coincidence uh, when Pastor Charlie came in in December and he was preaching and he was talking about rebuilding the altar of God because if you know the story, it really starts in Ezra and they came back and they started rebuilding the altar of God and rebuilding the temple and all of those things before the walls were even built. Um, Pastor Charlie said a couple of things that just stood out to me and I was like, Lord, you are doing something and you wanna do something in our women because he wants to meet with us tonight and I believe that strongly. He said he believes what's going on today is that stones of the altars are scattered and it's time for the church to rebuild the altars of our lives and in our families, and in our church. Because the problem with the broken altar is that an altar is a place where worship happens, sacrifice happens, offering happens, and where meeting God and establishing covenants happen. It's a meeting place with the Lord. And he said, therefore, we must insist on inward transformation of the heart. We must desire, we must desire to know God and what pleases him. And this is what's happening in the story of Nehemiah. And the walls, why are they important? They protect what was behind them. They're protecting the altar of God. They're protecting the temple of God. And so today, that temple's in us, 
1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you know that you're God's temple and that God's spirit dwells within you? And I believe the Lord is calling us tonight to do what we need to do to protect what he's building in our hearts. That moment in worship was a real moment. He was here and he's still here. And he's been doing something this whole weekend in your hearts. And it's time for us to do what we need to do to protect that work, to protect what he's doing in our hearts. And what a gift that we get to choose. To be scattered or to accept the gift of being able to remain with God. The one who created us, who desires, has desired us since the beginning, who wants to dwell with us, to remain with us, which he does now when we accept him. And can the worship team come back up? We're, I'm, it's not long, I want us to get back with the Lord, but John 15 says, remain in me and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it's served from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Yes, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who remain in me, and I in them, will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch within withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned, but if you remain in me, and my word remains in you, and you ask for anything you want, it will be granted. When you produce much fruit, you're my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I have loved you, even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments and you read in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love, I have told you these things so that you would be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. And so tonight, I just felt the Lord just really pressing me that tonight's a night to choose. To remain with him, to remain connected to the vine, or be scattered and continue living where you feel like things are chaotic. Life is still crazy. <laughs> that doesn't change it. But when all the things are going on around you, he is our solid rock. He is our firm foundation. He is the one that steadies us. He is the one that grounds us. And in remaining in him is the best place to be. And so if that's you, if you want to make the decision today, I'm not just, if you can put the salvation prayer up. Um, if you can all stand, actually, just stand real quick. And I feel like I need to pray before we even do this. But Lord, I just pray right now, God, that with our eyes closed, God, that we would just sit and take a moment to just listen. Just to listen to you. Lord God, if you've been speaking to us, Lord, you've been moving, you have been. And Lord, I feel like right now you're putting in our hearts, God, to help us see how we've been living scattered have we ever remained in you, Lord? For those of us who haven't, God, I thank you that tonight we get to choose. What a gift to be able to choose to remain in you. Lord, you made a way. We don't have to live confused, not knowing, like, what do I do? What do I do? Lord, you are the answer. You are the way. And remaining in you is where we find steadiness for our feet, steadiness for our hearts. You are the way. And so God, I just pray that you would come and soften hearts, Lord, that are just needing a touch from you. And so if you feel that today is your day to choose. I just want you to raise your hands and declare these words. Today is a day that you can declare it in confidence. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. I know that I'm a sinner and I repent for my sins. Come into my life 
and be my Lord and Savior. Today I've been made new. From this day forward, I will follow you. And if you made that declaration, if you chose today to stand and to remain with the Lord, what a great day for you. And I encourage you to come up here and let one of our prayer partners partner with you and pray with you. And for the rest of us, um, a few weeks ago, Jane Hutchinson actually had a word. I was like, Laura, I don't know how you want to end this. This is so interesting. Um, and she came and she shared a picture that the Lord gave her. And she was like, I was just playing. And he showed me feet. And she was like, Lord, you're showing me feet. And she said as she was looking, she realized that it was the feet of Jesus, pierced for our transgression. <laughs> and she said that she felt him calling um, her to just lay at his feet, and then he ended it, remain. And so I was like, Lord, and it was like in that moment that I was like, that's what he just wants. That's what he's wanted since the beginning for us to remain in him. And so tonight, I want you to get out of your seats, find a place that you can be and remain at the feet of Jesus. If you need prayer, we'll have our prayer partners in here, and worship team will, will lead us to worship, but we get to remain with him right now in this place, and so I just feel like we should not take that for granted, and we should pursue him with all that we have tonight. And so, Lord, we just thank you that your presence is here. We thank you that you want to move. We thank you, Lord, that you are in this place. And we pray, God, that you would just make yourself known, make yourself tangible, God. As we were praying, Lord, I just felt that you were at prayer, Lord, just hovering around this place, God. And for those that needed you in their hearts, Lord, you were willing to come in their hearts and fill it. So God, I pray right now, Lord, that those that need you in their heart, that just are needing that filling from you, that they'd receive it, and that your, your presence would just flood this place, God. Meet us and let us remain in you in this moment.